Hi, I'm Brian from Simply Brian Enterprises and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a little peek at transistors. Now, we were introduced to transistors in Top Tech Boys Raspberry Pi class lesson number 29, and I ran into some issues. I saw some things in the chat and I thought it would be worth to just take a little time and discuss what's really going on with transistors and help us understand a little better about how to choose them, what they do, and um, be able to build better circuits in our homework. I'm gonna use a very high-tech solution of a Sharpie stylus and some notebook paper. Sorry, I don't have a fancy tablet, but you know what? This is gonna work just fine. What I wanna do is I wanna actually diagram out um, some simple circuits using transistors. So hopefully you can get a better idea of how they work, why we use them, and most importantly, how we use them in a circuit. So to start off, I'm going to draw a really simple circuit diagram. Simple battery with a push button switch, a current limiting resistor, excuse my art skills, they're not very good, but you get the idea, an LED. And so in this simple circuit, when I take my finger and I press down on, let's say it's a momentary tack switch, the light is going to light. It's going to it's going to close this it's going to close the circuit close the loop and we'll send power to the led the led will light when i take my finger off it opens the circuit and the led goes off well that's very handy but what if i don't have physical access to my circuit what if i want to do this electronically using a microcontroller what kind of switch could i use well you've probably guessed from the title of this video we're going to use a transistor and so I'm going to just draw a really simple circuit diagram using a PNP transistor. And we'll see how this works. So here's my two circuits side by side. The only difference is I replaced the physical switch with a transistor. And this is again a PNP type. I'll explain more on that in a bit. I've got the emitter, the collector, and the base. And I've also got a current limiting resistor going back to my GPIO pin. By controlling the power in and out of the base, I can turn the LED on, turn the LED off, or adjust the amount of light that it outputs. So let's talk about what these transistors really are. What's in the kit, the SunFounder Raphael kit, is a type of transistor called a BJT, or a bipolar junction transistor. And what that really means is that there are two types of transistors we have. Wow, that did not turn out well at all. I'm going to draw that again. That's part of uh, part of doing this here. So there we go. That's a better arrow. So base, collector, emitter. And just talk amongst yourselves while I struggle with my uh, lacking art skills. All right, so here we have what we're going to call a PNP transistor. We have our base collector emitter, and as you can see from the direction of the emitter, current is going to flow from the emitter into the transistor and out the collector. In the case of an NPN transistor, we've got the, <clears throat> we've got the direction going the other way. We're going, current is going to flow from collector to emitter. And the way we control that flow of current is by adjusting the voltage in and out of the base, which is where we're going to connect our microcontroller GPIO pin. Now, if you get nothing else from this video, this is the part you really got to pay attention to. In the kit, the model number for the PNP transistor is 8550, S8550, excuse me. And the NPN is S8050. Very similar part numbers, but very different functionality. Me personally, I like to take my lighted magnifier and hold it up against the transistor package so that I can read those numbers a little clearer so I can double, triple, quadruple check that I'm grabbing the right one. As you can see, the difference is the way the current flows. If I have a PNP, it's going to flow from emitter to collector. If I have an NPN, it's going to flow from collector to emitter. Now, the other piece that's important is how we signal 
the base to send the current. To do that, we have to understand how these transistors are constructed. So in order to construct a transistor, we have two types of semiconductor material, and you may have guessed one is a P-type and one is an N-type. So if I have a P-type bonded to an N-type bonded to a P-type, I have a, you guessed it, P and P transistor. So you can see here the collector and the emitter are on the p-types, the base is on the n-type. In order to get current to flow from emitter to collector, I need to bring the n-type voltage down, or what we would call a sinking current, in order to make the current flow. In an NPN transistor, we have an n-type bonded to a p-type bonded to an n-type, and in order to get current to flow from collector to emitter, we need to increase the voltage. It's always about where the base is bonded. If the base is bonded to the n-type, we need to lower the voltage or use a sinking current. If it's bonded to a p-type, we need to use a higher voltage or a sourcing current. Now. If you've watched my channel before, you might have heard those terms sinking and sourcing. So let's do a little refresher. Let's go back to the RGB LED lesson. And oh my goodness, I hope I draw these somewhat okay. Ah, that wasn't too bad. So in the Sunfound Raphael kit is an RGB LED, and this is called a common cathode RGB LED. And what we mean by that is the common pin that everything is tied to is the cathode or the negative side and the individual colors are the anodes or positives so in order to let's say i wanted to light the red i'm going to take my gpio pin that is connected to the red and i'm going to set my pwm duty cycle of 255 and that means it's full bright if i want to turn it off i'm going to set my duty cycle to zero that's full off. Now, I ran into a problem with my RGB LED because I hadn't gotten my SunFounder kit yet, and I had to pull an RGB LED from one of my other kits, which happened to be what we would call a common anode. That means the common lead is actually positive, so this goes to the positive rail on the breadboard, and the color leads, which go to the GPIO pins, want a negative or sinking current. So in order to light the red full bright here, I would set my PWM, my uh, duty cycle to zero for full bright and 255 for full off. Completely backwards of the way you would think. You would think higher voltage, brighter, lower voltage, dimmer. But in fact, the common anode is exactly backwards. So what I ended up doing in my code is treating it as if I was going to source the current. So I would do all my math and figure out the value of the LED. And then right before I wrote it out, I would invert the value. So let's say I was going to send uh, 192 to the red, but I was using a common anode, so I had to invert it. So I inverted it and ended up with 64. So I ended up sending 64 to the red on a common anode would be the same as setting a 192 on the common cathode completely backwards and caused some headaches when I was doing design and obviously the math. Well, we run into the same problem with transistors. And I want to show you the schematic, a simplified version of the schematic uh, from lesson 29. So we had this buzzer and we came down here and we have a PNP transistor. So we have collector, emitter. Remember P and P, we go from emitter to collector. And here's our base, but we need a sinking current in order to, you know what, I got to get in the habit. There's got to be a current limiting resistor on the base, and I'll tell you why in just a little bit. 
there is a little caveat to using these, and that's why you need to put a current limiting resistor on the base, between the base and the GPIO. Excuse me. Anyway, back to the storyline. So when I was trying to get this code to work, I had lost sight of this, and I was trying to source it. I was trying to set my duty cycle to 255, and nothing happened. No buzz. Why? Because I had a PNP transistor, which needs to be sunk to a duty cycle of zero. Once I had, I was actually digging through some of my electronics manuals and discovered that, oh yeah, PNP, you need to bring the voltage down. So I took the base, jumpered it to ground, and wouldn't you know it, the buzzer buzzed. So I got past that. But I don't like that because I don't want to write my code in a way like I did with the common anode LED, where I'm doing everything backwards and then writing it out and inverting it to write it out. I'd rather do it um, using, if I want the buzzer to buzz, send the current up, use a source and current. So a better way to do this would be take my voltage input to my buzzer. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to use an NPN transistor. Because now, if I increase the base voltage, current is going to flow from collector to emitter, and the buzzer will buzz. Now, quick lesson. Why do we need to put a current limiting resistor in place? Well, because this is a junction, because we have these pieces of, of semiconductor material bonded together, even though the majority of the current is flowing, NPN emitter to collector, a little tiny bit wants to drivel into the base. If I'm using a high current, let's say I'm using 3.3 volt uh, Raspberry Pi GPIO, and I'm using a 5 volt to drive the buzzer, some of this 5 volt current is going to leak into the base, and I want to keep that away from my GPIO pin. So I'm going to put a current limiting resistor in place there. There's a lot more to it. There's a lot more complex math. But I wanted to go through just a really simple explanation of how these transistors work and how do we use them in circuits. So I hope this video is helpful. If you like this video, be sure to click like below and subscribe to my channel. For Simply Brian Enterprises, I'm Brian. Thank you for watching.